So today on Simply Happy Conversations, I have with me Gray. She's a portrait photographer behind Simply Gray Photography, and she's also released a book, so she's an author as well. And the book is called 50 and Wiser Club. She's going to share with us why it's important for us to back up our photos and also talk with us about how to actually um, organize our photos, especially on our iPhone. Welcome, Gray. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I love that our businesses are both called Simply. I know. I noticed that last night. I just put that together. <laughs> and so is there a... Is we there need a, to keep things simple, I guess. Yes. Is there a story behind it? I mean, obviously it's got... Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, um, I started my business 15 years ago. And um, when you know you're trying to come up with a business name, and obviously it's not like the most important thing when you start business, but it takes up a lot of space. So I remember driving through the tunnel in Melbourne and it just hit me. It was only me. And I thought simply gray photography. And I thought, is that a bit corny? I don't know. I'll change it in a couple of years if I don't like it. And it's stuck. That's, that's a bit like mine. It was like simply that just embraces everything happy. I'm always happy. And you know, I was doing wellness <laughs> coaching and now organizing in yoga. So it actually was able to change quite easily. Isn't that interesting? Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah it works well. And and then you find out how popular it really is of a name. So. <laughs> and so tell us about what sort of accessories, if you were a Barbie doll, what two accessories would you come with? All right, I was thinking about this. Well, first of all, it would have to be a camera, yeah. right? Because I'm a photographer. And um, the other thing is to tell a bit about me is two passports. So I'm an American citizen and for the last eight Oh gosh, actually, I think about eight years, I've been an Australian citizen. So um, I tend to travel a lot because um, especially in the um, after COVID, I've been back to the US quite a bit because um, I had elderly parents. So yes, two passports, you gotta have one to go to America and I have to have one to come back to um, Australia. And um, it's really nice when we travel not to the US because then I just have to carry one. Oh, that's good. So, so what do you miss about the US? Yes. Is there anything in particular? Oh, what do I miss? Yeah. Um, I, I do miss, <laughs> I do love a New York bagel. Mm. So I'm from New York and there's nothing like a New York bagel. It has to do with the water. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. I'm sorry, Australian bagel makers, but there's nothing like it. Um, and I guess just family and friends. Yeah. yeah family. And, and what do you love about Australia? Oh, and I have to tell you, oh, what do I love about Australia? Yeah. Oh, you know, I just, I love the lifestyle. I really love the lifestyle. Yeah. And, um, and my family and friends. Yeah. And I have to tell you, Narelle, the other thing my Barbie doll would have is a coffee. A what was that? A puppy? Sorry, a coffee. Oh, a coffee. A coffee. <laughs> I do love my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yes, very and, good. and my Lego figure in my daughter's uh, Legos does have a coffee in the camera. Oh, cool. So <laughs> she has a, a mommy Lego figure oh. and uh, it has a coffee. And in the <laughs> I love it. But I thought the two passports kind of told a bit about Yeah, no, I like that. It's really, it just gives you a little <laughs> bit of insight into people and um, and their lives around them and the things they like to do. So if you had... Yeah, any, I love that question. I know, it's cute. I saw, took a bit from someone else's um, questions and I was like, I love that question. <laughs> um, so if I was to come to your house and work as a professional organizer, what area would you like help organizing? Because there's always one spot yeah. in people's homes that's that hot spot. What would it be? Yeah. And you know what? I've, um, I've had a local woman come and help me before, but, and, and I thought about what other areas. So she helped me with my pantry and my laundry, no, my linen closet. But if you came around, what I really would love help with is I brought back, um, some fair family heirlooms oh. and keepsakes when we had to close the family house. And you know what? They're all sitting in my garage and I would really like help with that. Yeah. Actually, made me think I need to get help, some help with that. And the other thing is the constant struggle is my Tupperware drawer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I just did it. Actually, I just organized it. And like, where do those, like, why do you always end up with extra lids and Tupperware that just don't match? And why is that drawer? Actually, we have three. <laughs> Never, never stay home. organized. <laughs> like it's like the vein of my existence. I, I don't know what it is. So those are the two things yeah. 
I would love help. Uh, and then you've got a draw mm. though for Tupperware. It's great when you've got a draw, but when you've got a cover, I got three. it's so much harder <laughs> to organize. But maybe that's it. There's three. Got- if, maybe if you took it down to two, that might even be easier to manage. Yeah. 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 Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I, well, what I do is one of them, there's two and then a shelf and then, yeah, maybe I just have too much. And then I have one for this, the, the lost pieces. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So now that you could get rid of the lost pieces possibly. But the other thing is too, is yes. do you put your lids with the containers so they're matching the whole time or are the lids all together and the containers are all together? You know what? I started putting the lids in the containers together yeah. because I just, it's like tr- so frustrating. I, and I've tried to go like, um, I've tried to go to the glass, you know, yeah. like with the glass and the lids, like, so that, um, yeah. And then, yeah, I, I, I put the lids on them. That's what I just did this past weekend. Actually, that's what I did. You must've been channeling me. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, and I put the lids together cause it's just so frustrating when you can't find a lid and you just need it really quick. Yeah. And I find then that's when it I, takes up more space when you do that. So you're oh, allowed to have three ah, drawers ah, then but, because you're actually going to be taking up so much space. And so if you've got the, you know, the real estate to be able to do that in your kitchen, then why not? Then, you know, match it that way. That is yeah. the ideal way, but most people don't have that space. Okay. That's the ideal way. I put, they're in my laundry room. I actually had a, uh, some spare um, pull out drawers. Yeah. Um, and that's what I did. Yeah. And I'd love to get rid of the one that has like the lost lids. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm just afraid to throw them out. Yes, out. just in case, as everyone says, just in case that container turns up. Maybe give yourself a time limit. Six months. If it hasn't okay, turned okay. up Sounds by good. Christmas, okay, you guys are going. <laughs> so share, us with, share with us about your strengths that you bring to the work as a photographer, and in particular because you work with women, a lot of women. Mm. Yeah, I think um, – I was thinking about that. And one of the things is I really take great interest in my clients. Like I really care who they are. I like to hear their stories. I like to know what makes them tick. I like to know what makes them happy, even like kind of things they've gone through. And that's what I really found with doing the the project, the 50 and wiser club. So um, my goal is really to capture a look in them that their loved ones see in them. Cause when we look at ourselves, we see ourselves in the mirror and we're always critical. Like, but like, how often do we look in the mirror and be like, oh, I love you? You know, like, <laughs> we're always like, oh, no, look at the gray hair or look at the wrinkles or look at this or look at that. <laughs> yeah, like, we're always so critical, but our loved ones see us in a different light. Like, they don't see, we, and we all have to know this as women, like, when our friends and our loved ones look at us, they do not see our faults. They just see us for who, who we are, really, because our faults really aren't us. Um, and, and that is what I really try to capture. So I have to get to know them and, and like I said, I try to capture their authentic self, but sometimes a little glammed up, sometimes not glammed up, you know, but still that look. And it's really interesting if I ever do a reveal and I have the woman with their loved ones, what their loved, their loved ones, like, that's you. I love that photo. And still as a woman, we're like, but my ears a bit big, you know, (laughs) or whatever, you know, like something like as silly as that, you know, but, and I just had one recently and, and the woman's like, you do. He goes, yeah, that's so you, I love that. And that's what I try to capture. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, and I think the other thing that real, I, I would hope other, other photographers do this, but I really work hard on my posing and I've really, especially when I started photographing women just as without their families, like I really, and I continually am studying posing and um, posing. There's a different posing technique to men and women. And then the whole thing is just posing for people. But um, yeah. And then there's the thing posing for how do we make ourselves look our best? So I even tell, I tell people when don't look at an outfit and be like, well, I don't like how I look in it. Cause you're looking at it as you're standing, but you'll never just be standing like that in front of my camera. I'll pose you to look the best and to bring out your best features. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And I do so, looking on yeah. your website and also um, on your Instagram is beautiful to go and have a look because you can really tell the way they pose. It is. They all look absolutely amazing in all of their photos. So, yeah. I really enjoyed yeah, and, oh, scrolling so through much. them last night. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. And it's not, it's not necessarily natural. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like posed pictures. 
So it's like, how do we get an image that doesn't look overposed, mm. but they're still, uh, you know, directed and still have you in them. And it is important though, because the first thing I'll just real quick. And for the people that can watch this, the first thing we do when we're in, have a camera in front of our faces, we back away. Mm. Then we go like this. And it's just really important not to back away because then our neck is long and, but we all do this. Like, it's just the natural thing to do. So just having a guide, like a coach, you know, tell, reminding you, bring that forehead or chin forward. It just makes a heaps of difference. And um, yeah, I just, when I first started, I didn't really pay attention to that. And I think, look, if we're not happy with how we look, we're, we're not going to like our photos. So I just want everybody to feel really confident when they leave the studio. I want them, to, my goal is for them to feel better and more confident after they leave my session than when they came in. And I'm sure then they'll take then those I know tips I did my job. away, won't they? Take those tips when they're <laughs> getting a photo, just as a general <laughs> selfie done or, you know, a photo with their family. That's right. That's what I tell them. Yeah. I said, you tell your girlfriends all about this and you'll never take another selfie the same again. Yes, so, exactly, yeah. exactly. And I do see, I don't know if you see, do you notice that the younger generation the way they pose and do their photos because they've got TikTok teaching them all of these little ticks and trips, ticks, tips and tricks. They're probably better at taking photos than we were, we were. I think they are, but I think still you lose that authenticity mm. with the younger generation. I think, um, they're trying so much sometimes for that Instagram look. Oh, yes. And look, I haven't thought about this. And this is off the cuff yeah, of my is. head. Sorry. But I do think they're more confident and they are more confident, which is really important because when you're confident or and or, or maybe so much not necessarily confident, more of like you don't have that care factor because you're you know, they're so used to doing it. Yes. So because of the fact that they're not so selfish like self self critical of themselves or more confident mm. in it, um, they tend to just look better because they're relaxed doing it. Yeah. yeah. But they get a lot of this, you know, that's not that natural. <laughs> and, yeah, but then, you know. and then they also, though, want to go and have a quick look and change it. Whereas we're, I think from our generation, you know, you took the photo and you waited till the photo, the film was developed. So we're not so much sure. about Oh no, that's terrible. Take it again. No, take it again. Whereas, yeah, I'm more like. Well, then remember, actually, we never to think. You, you know, I never thought it. about that, Narelle. But you're right. We never got it back. Yeah. From the local chemist and been like, oh my gosh, you know. No, we were just so happy to have a photo. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so happy. Yeah, you're right. That there's a lot to be said about that. Is yeah, there? and that yeah. waiting, that waiting time for your photo. So then, tell us about the book. That what drove you to write, write the book Fifty and Why Is a Club? All right. Well, so there's a bit about what got me started and what kept me going. So what got me started when I was about 45, I saw um, someone for their 40th birthday photograph 40 women. And I thought, Ooh. Ooh, that's an idea. And I don't know about you, but I like have in my notes or a notebook, I write down ideas, mm. my calendar, like I want to do these someday. So that was one of mine that I put a mental note. And also I literally wrote it down when I turn 50, I want to do that. So um, actually, so here's the book. Oh, beautiful. Yes. That's, that's me on the cover. I was 50. I'm 52 now. Just turned 52. And um, I think, you know, turning 50 is a bit daunting. Narelle, I don't know how old you I'm are. I'm 49 so this wanna, year, um... so mine's next year. <laughs> oh, okay. This is, all right. I'm talking to you, my dear. All right. So turning 50 is a bit daunting. And um, I think I wanted something to do during my milestone birthday year and probably something to distract me from turning 50. That's probably what my husband always says. I need a distraction. So it was probably like something to distract me. And also I hadn't really before this photograph women just for themselves. I've always photographed them with their family or for work. So I wanted to prove to myself and to women that you can be photographed just for you. You don't really need a reason. You, we could celebrate you. You don't have to hide behind your family or your business. So that's what really got me started. What got me going was um, my business coach at the time actually said, you need to contact like 20 people and ask them about the idea to even see if it would work. I, I think she kind of doubted me. I don't know, maybe, or she just pushed me. And I called one friend of mine and she said to me, do not put me in that club. <laughs> I do not want to be in that 50 and wiser club. How dare, like, how dare you, you know? And uh, 
<laughs> she doesn't remember. So I, I finally told her this just recently, but she's like, did I really? I said, yeah, but you know what? That's okay. Cause you gave me, it wasn't the, when I called those 20 people, I knew there was people that were keen, but I had a couple people that said, good luck with that. Craig. They were the ones that really, <laughs> they were the ones that really inspired me to keep going because I wanted to prove that there was something special about turning 50. And I quickly learned that us women over 50 were really powerful human beings. Okay. We are, and as one of my women said, and I quoted them in the book, we are the heartbeat of society. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, because we have the benefit of past life experience. And if we're lucky enough, we have a time ahead of us because not all of us are lucky to get here, which is another thing I really um, got a great a great appreciation for, but we have the time ahead of us to make life for ourselves and our society better. And we're at that point where probably um, our children are needing us less. So not only do we have the experience to help others and society and ourselves um, and our family, but we have the time. Like we're finally getting that time back that we can actually make a difference in our, like in our, in our communities too. Mm -hmm. And and actually, I'm learning now, actually, it's really 60s is another great decade because for a lot of us, we still have the kids in our 50s, like, because we started a bit late. Well, maybe you've so got parents, 60s, even... isn't it, as well, is the other part. So you may be we looking parents. at parents. And you know what? Yeah. You have parents. You have parents. So I'm learning that the 60s, yeah. I've even learning the 60s, don't be afraid of them either. Like, I was so afraid of turning 50. I remember at 45, I'm like, at least I'm not 50, you know, but now I'm even learning that the 60s are great. So... In this book, we have 74 women, and wow. um, I put it by different categories, like uh, like themes, like resilience. I just opened up to resilience. Um, but then I have, like, all the women that their stories kind of talk about resilience. And, um, yeah, but you can see, like, there's women all the way, 50, all the way to my mom's in here at 95. Wow, that's amazing. You know, yeah. so, um, and I have women in every decade, and I would say majority of them probably in their 50s and 60s, yeah. but we have 70s and 80s and 90s. Um, but it's their stories. Like this woman, you know, this woman, she actually um, lived through the um, Black Saturday and she talked about that and and their, like, their wisdom. So basically it says, the 50 and Wiser Club, celebrating women, celebrating the strength, beauty, and wisdom of women over 50. Yeah, love it. So, and that's what we did. And it was supposed to be 100 pages. And it ended, and I couldn't just, I was only going to put a quote for each woman. And as they told me their stories, I thought, this is where the magic is. Mm. It's, and I asked each one of them, like how you asked me about the Barbie doll. I asked each one, what did you want to be as a little girl? And, and tell me about where you evolved to. And the interesting about how we just evolve and evolve and evolve. And it's okay. Like that's okay, and that's that's the beauty of life. So that's what the, it has the, the seventy four women's stories in there, and um, yeah, and I dedicated it to all the women that didn't make it to fifty mm, because um, you know I want us to you know celebrate that we're there, like not think of this as a, like we're at the end of the road. We're at the beginning. Mm. We're really at the beginning of. Um, the next phase of life. Oh, that's so. how I'm looking at it as well. So yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah. that is, it is. It's totally like that. So yeah. Um, yeah. And I, um, you, if you put the link, I still have for the month of May, I have a Mother's Day special where it's $5 off the book. Oh, beautiful. And uh, basically the, the proceeds of this book um, go to a foundation that supports women at risk here in Victoria. Oh, nice. Oh, so, beautiful. Um, I'll definitely share You're not only getting like inspiration yourself, you're helping out. And We've already raised over $20,000 wow. for them, so it's it's quite exciting. But you yeah. also had an exhibition that's part of the book release as well, didn't you? We did. Yeah. We had a huge, like in November, we yeah. had a huge, we had an exhibit, a book launch. Um, we had like a day of empowerment day. And, that, and through all of that, that's where we raised the funds for them. And we're continuing to raise um, with the sales of the book. And also I'm doing another project this year called the Wise Women Project. And I'm now actually, I just started outlining the exhibit and um, what we'll be doing for that next year for International Women's Day. Oh, that's what it was. So I'm really I did read that about International There's not another it? book in the works, yeah. but it has its own kind of, yeah. it has its own, it still has its own thing. Because the book, <laughs> when I first started the book, all right, we're getting off track, sorry. I said, um, I, I had a lot of like publish, I ended up self-publishing with a mm. beautiful editor and mentor and I had a whole team. 
I couldn't have done it myself actually. So self publishing is kind of the wrong word, but, um, all the publishers told me it'd take two years. And I said, I don't have two years. Well, it took me two years. Yeah. 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 I can imagine. Like, <laughs> that's, books, yeah, that, that's yeah. why a lot of people don't go back and write another one, do they? They've done it. They do the process. Yeah, I go, do have Whoa. another one up here that I want to do. But yes, I'm giving myself a Give break. A break. <laughs> so. <laughs> so tell us then about what was that? What's been one of the toughest decisions? Was it to do with the book at all in your like career, even in your photography business? What's one of the toughest decisions? You know, I, cause I saw that question he asked me and I, I was like, oh, what, now what is she talking? I don't know what you meant, but I'll have to tell you one of the toughest decisions I met in life, made in life. And maybe this is, will be very, um, will help people because you talked about helping elderly parents. Um, so in 2013, my husband and I actually uprooted our whole family and went back to New York to look after my parents. My dad was 90. My mom was like 80. I forget at the time she was 80 something, uh, probably 80. Well, that doesn't really matter. Four. Let's just say four. Um, and we went back uh, and we, we were just, my, my husband said, we'll go for two years. We stayed for three years. And then my son was about to hit year six. And we knew we wanted to come back for high school for him. And But that was the toughest for me personally. I, it was such a hard decision. Um, I do love Australia, um, but I actually love I'm almost, I'm pre become pretty good at just making the best of wherever I am. And um, it was really hard for me to leave New York. Actually, it was really, really hard because I was leaving, um, yeah, I was leaving my parents. Mm. And I have to say that was one of the toughest decisions. And I actually, I actually went to a psychologist and I said, I need you to help me. I know I what I need to do, but I don't want to feel resentful. Mm. Yeah, that's anyway. important. And I, you know what? I don't regret coming back to Australia whatsoever. Um, and, but it was a really tough decision and I'm really happy. And I'm, I am, those were the best three years of our family's life and the hardest, but, um, yeah, now that both my parents are gone, um, I'm really happy. I went and, um, and it was the best thing for our family to come back. Yeah. And yeah, just to, and that, that's probably but having that awareness to go ahead and get some help to assist you through that is amazing too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th I think that's important because as we are aging and my pet mom had me and dad had me late in life. So I had, I hit that early or then most mm. people probably listening to the podcast did. Um, my mom was 44 when I was born. My father was 49. Uh, and back then that was unheard of, but I think, yeah, you know what, get help yeah. and talk to your friends because you're not alone and it's hard. Yeah especially as you're looking after your kid. It, it, it's really tough when the roles reverse with your parents, but we're all going through it. If we're, you know what, if we're lucky enough, we're all mm. going through it. We didn't lose our parents early in life and uh, yeah, get help because it, it's hard and, and don't underestimate how hard that is. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you for that. So I think, yes, that was, for that, that was, that's totally off topic, but <laughs> no, yeah, but it's there nice you go. To hear it. I don't know. Like you said, I'm the same as you. I love hearing people's stories and how they're interwoven you know, through their whole life, isn't it? And and how they are now, what they've turned out and the philosophies and values they have mm. are all from their stories throughout their life. So now tell us about photos. Let's go back to organising photos. Okay. Which Let's is why there. everyone Let's talk about organising photos. So backing up photos. Like I have, I had a client even just this week who's like, oh my goodness, I can't even think about it. But right now I have no photos of my kids because her phone has broken and she hasn't paid for a cloud or anything and she has not backed up her photos. So tell us about okay. well, how let's, to... Let's talk yes, about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, okay, so first I'm going to talk about, Narelle, on if you have photos on your PC. Yep. Because you do. We all do because... Um, and they might be on an old laptop or something like that. But look, if you... And I... I keep less and less on my PC because I do so much on my iPhone. Seriously, as a professional photographer, the last few trips overseas, I just took my iPhone. You know, yeah. that's they're so good nowadays. So, um, But we all know that dreaded feeling when the PC or laptop won't turn on. We get the blank black screen or external hard drive. We drop it or we lose it, right? And what about the fear of flood mm -hmm. where you live, fire or theft? Right. So the thing is, make sure you back up. There's so many options. And actually, it wasn't until recently I had a problem about a year ago. I think, yes, I just hit my one year anniversary. The company sent me a message um, that I found a really good option. But listen, if you have if you have a um, 
if you have a Macintosh, a Mac, Macintosh, that's, hey, that's old, isn't it? <laughs> um, use time machine, okay. like use time machine, but that still doesn't take the fear of, for me was if I travel, if someone broke in, I don't know why they'd take my time machine. They probably wouldn't, but, um, or fire or flood. Right. So, um, really good. You can back up your PC laptops now to Dropbox. Mm. To me, it's worth the money. Like I, I use Dropbox. Um, it's where I keep like the backup of my client photos they order. Or also there's another one I've just recently used, Blaze. So Blaze is um, blaze.com, B-L-A-Z-A-E. Sorry, B-L-A-Z-E. I thought I was really being good saying Z and not Z, but yes. Um, blaze.com, they're really good. I, I just, to be honest, I just get it where it backs up um, a particular hard drive of mine that I use and my my um, Mac, my Mac, uh, iMac. Yeah. And, and I know that if anything happens to iMac, I can then go back and get it. And it's, it's on this blaze. I just pay, I don't get history on it per se. I just get whatever is the most recent. So, um, you can pay more to have like so many months of history, but I just know now if anything happens and someone comes in and takes my MacBook or sorry, it's my MacBook's not on it right now. Um, but my, my iMac that it's on there and I can, I can retrieve it. And I just think that takes the stress mm. away. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the stress. Like who needs one, one more thing to stress about. Okay. Um, now your photos, um, on your, on your computers. And this is also what I recommend with your phones is at the end of the day, we only need a handful of memories. We do not need thousands and thousands and thousands because what happens just like Tupperware, <laughs> we can never find it if we have too much of it, right? It's just like the Tupperware. So I highly recommend with your old photos and don't stress if you don't do this already, because it's fun to go back and look mm. at your memories. And as you have time away from it, like if your kids are 18 and you look at the baby photos, you realize you don't need every single baby photo, right? So I highly recommend make a folder that says family, our photos, do it by year, start whatever, 2005 or I don't know, whatever it is, you know, um, start that year. And if you want, organize it by month or whatever, but pick your top 20 to 50 photos for that year. Yeah. And those are the ones that really need to be backed up. Yeah. And those are the ones at the end of the day, when your kid turns 18 yes. and you're going back, right? Yep. You're going back and you need the photos. You're going to go for those top 20 to 50. And while you're at it, why not create a book, a photo book, book of those top 20 or 50s for that what year? Blurb is a great company. Um, I do a lot of my books with them that are my family books and um, you could do that. So that. I think that takes a lot of stress out of it because you know, okay, from all those years, I just have my top. Now I do do this. Am I consistent? No. So I'm like, great. You can do <laughs> yes. this consistently because it's such a good tip. And just keep, so in 2005, you might have all your months. If you don't like to delete anything, fine. Keep all the ones, but keep a folder saying 2005 top 20 to 50 photos. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. You pick the number. Yeah. I mean, maybe you have 10, maybe you're even better than me. Um, I have a hard time picking 50. So, um, but yeah, but I think sometimes when you give yourself space from that, doing it right away, then um, you can easily pick those. But yeah, that's that. That's my, so you can start any time. So mine is when we drive to Swan Hill, which is a five hour drive. <laughs> And my husband will usually drive and I will sit there. And because there's no, there's not internet on the way, there's a lot of just dead black spots. And so I will sit there and I clean my phone out. So we probably go there once a term and that is my opportunity to clean out my phone. Oh, great. Because we're going to talk about phone photos <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. That's one of my tips yeah. too. Yes. Use your time wisely. Yes. Or, you know, you're so on a train. Should we talk about your our yeah, phone? Yeah. You know, you find there is a time, usually when you're in a car driving or you're on a train, and that you can just organize and possibly you don't have internet. And so it's a great time to um, organize right. it, isn't it? Yes. So how do you organize your phone, your photos on your phone or what's the best, some suggestions of ways to do it? All right. It? So that's what, so I highly suggest keeping your phone photos organized. Yeah. All right. There's a couple reasons why you have the less stress of losing your memories. You make it easier to find those key memories. And you know what? There's two other things. You save space on your phone. Like who hates that dreaded? Yeah. I don't have the space. And it's, it's kind of satisfying. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of satisfying. 
So the other thing is make sure the phone is backed up. So you can back it up to the iCloud, which is great. Um, I pay extra. My husband says, why do you do that? But I just, he's like, why don't you download them? And I say, you know what? I love the ha- being able to have memories. I love that it like, it will show me like memories. Yeah, like, same. I'm like, like that too. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I love those little videos it creates for us. I just love it. I love it. I remember before the iPhone came up, I always said, I wanted this I wanted to create a screen one day that just kind of showed you memories. And, and now, look at the it iPhone now. Has done it, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it does. So the other thing is, um, you well, you can back up your phone to your hard drive, but then, I don't know, to me, it's a hassle. But um, you could also back up your phone to Dropbox, Google Drive, Google Photos. And I have fa- I just read, because I was looking at it, you know, that if you do do it to those Dropbox, Google Drive, and Google Photos, I think they do keep. Like if you delete, they keep yes. the deleted photos. Yeah. But to me, you know what? If you want to organize your photos on your phone, you want them organized on your – like all your all your drives. Because if you have to go back and use them, who wants to then have to resort through them? So I kind of – I kind of think as you organize them on your phone, it's okay that you can actually, there's a deleted folder box mm. that doesn't clear out right away. So if you make a mistake, um, but yeah, might as well keep them organized everywhere. And what I was going to say is I do highly recommend once a month, like you just said, Norel, you do it once a term. So maybe once a term, instead of scrolling to social media, yes. go through your photos and delete the ones you don't need. So we all know we have the screenshots of things we wanted to remember that we forgot about that probably weren't that important, but anyway, and if, and if they are still important, create a folder for mm. them, which I'll um, talk about. I love folders, create your duplicate, get rid of duplicates, get rid of the, dupl- the selfies that your kids take. Yes. I don't know about yours, yes, but my daughter takes a million selfies. <laughs> so you maybe keep one, like you don't need them all. My kids take a lot of pictures of my dog. Oh yes. Same. On my yeah. phone. I don't know why they use my phone, but they use my phone. So delete those, keep a couple, but delete them. Anything that's blurry, um, just keep your favorites. Yeah. Cause that's all you're going to want in a few years time. Mm. Um, and if you have some catch up to do, like I said, if you don't do this already, don't stress, right? When the, you're waiting for this, pick up your kids from school, watching TV, driving to, where do you say you drive to? Swan Hill. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, Swan Hill. five hours. Yeah. But it could be having your morning like coffee. That. Yeah. It's like making Anything. a habit, isn't it? Of something you already That's do. That's right. Seriously, if you have time to check check Facebook, mm. you have thirty minutes to or fifteen minutes to start going through them. And and also, I, I had another one. Just set a timer for thirty minutes. And this is great when I guess organizing too, right? Mm. Just set a timer for thirty minutes. And um, before scroll, if you're scroll before you go to bed, just go through your photos and stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I also just found out your phone actually. If you go to the, if you have an iPhone and you go to the Photos app, we'll show you which ones are your duplicates. Yes, I did see that now. So they, yeah, they are getting better at updating yeah. that software, How yeah, good which is, that? is really good. Yes, yeah, that's really good. So we have that. Um, the other thing you could do that's really good is you can now go in and tag. Yes, like you know your kids. It does it automatically. It's pretty darn good, right? But um, but you could do that, and you could tag what places you're in. So in case um, maybe it's it hadn't already done that because you might've had your geo tracking off or something. You could do that yourself. Um, yeah. And my final thing is I love using folders. Yeah. So what sort of folders do so, you label? What's your sort of. Yeah. Go-to? So I label when I go on trips, yep. I end up putting my favorite folders on those. Um, if we're doing a renovation, I'll put them there. Um, like I actually, I know, I know it sounds kind of funny. I have a folder like for my mom. Yeah. And like some of my favorite photos for my mom, like just my favorites. Cause I know I could go in and select her and it will pull up most, but I just want to see like my really favorite ones. Um, like for business, like if I have like ideas, like for a studio or something like that, I have a folder for studio ideas. Um, when I used to do my other business with skincare, I, I had all the folders there, like, yeah. you know, with all the different things. Um, but it's great. And when you're done using them, you can then easily delete them and so forth. Yeah, mine's so. like people's names, my clients, and I save them all into there as well. Yeah. <laughs> like so many photos. Yeah, it's great. Actually, I do have a lot of photos. Like my daughter. Yeah. Bal- yeah. Now, I will. I have a traveling tip for keeping photos when you travel. Do you want to hear yeah, that yeah, one? Yeah, definitely. Sorry. I have a lot here. I have a lot. All right. So I just, like when you said when you travel, what I do when I travel is each night, like I try to view the, do this. It's not easy to do this, but each day I'll go back and look, like I told you, I do take them on my iPhone. 
I will go back and look at all my iPhone photos and, and delete the ones I don't want. And then I actually love heart the favorite ones. Yes. Yeah. Because I, can't, I have a really hard time cutting it down right away. And so automatically those love heart ones go in my favorite section. And I, and at the end of the trip, I can look at my favorite ones and be like, those are a great collection. Let me go delete the other ones. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or, oh, you know what? I really want to keep that one. And then I will usually create a folder for that. And then if I, I create, then it's easy if I want to do like a download to blurb or something like that to make a photo book, they're all oh, there. That's great. That's a good And what tip. I tend to do, yeah. And instead of oversharing on Facebook, <laughs> which I do do sometimes, I do a lot. I'll post just one picture each day because my kids hate me posting a lot of pictures right now. <laughs> so I'll post one picture each day, probably won't have my kids in it. And I'll just write a little reflection on that day. And then if I want to do a photo book, I have that on, on whatever social media I use. Um, so then I can do that and put all our photos for that day. And it's not necessarily we did this, 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 and this, and this. It might've just been like how I felt mm. and how I loved that city or, or one memory from that city from that day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice one. The other thing is anyway, recipes. That's what I do when I travel. Recipes, I find. Taking a photo of a recipe and then you're like, where's that recipe? So I've got a, a folder oh, now. Oh, that's a good idea. So that I can actually just go straight to that folder and find the recipe. You know, I mean, most of the time we, you know, see it. But, you know, if you're re waiting in a um, in a reception and you see a photo in the magazine and you're like, oh, that sounds good. Or, I don't know, just seeing it somewhere. It's like, oh, take a screenshot. Or even actually I've taken screenshots on um, Instagram of people's recipes and gone, yes. Yeah. Because I've saved it, but I'll probably never go back to that recipe folder in, in my Instagram, but I am probably more <laughs> likely to go back and see the written one. Um, the other one was calendars. So uh, we have a family calendar, which we do for my mother-in-law. And so putting a folder yeah. for that year and that's where they're saved. Um, so every year that's they're already a, and ready. And that's a really good idea. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, we used to make calendars for my mom and my mother-in-law too. I say used to. I haven't done it in a couple of years. But actually, that is a fabulous way um, to – and I have another idea of how to keep your memories that I wanted to share with your listeners. But that is a great way to use those 10 to 20. 20 to 50 top images because you can automatically create a calendar if you don't want to do a photo book and just print off an extra version for yourself. And even if you don't use it as a calendar, which you might as well, um, you have that, mm. like you have it printed, you have it, those pictures printed for the year. So those calendars are a fabulous idea. Who do you use for your calendars? Um, office work. Oh, not office work. Sorry. Big W. And just because I've got the same, hey, w. yeah, I just okay. have it there. And um, it, my family have one, so all my one of us take it in turns and have to make the calendar. It rotates around families, and then I also see so we all have to provide ten photos, and then I do one for the other side of the family, which is just my my own family, my immediate family. And so that has, and then that's ours as well. We have a copy of it. But I am next year. I'm thinking I'm going to actually make that into a photo book. But I do find yeah. now that my kids are a bit older. <laughs> like I'm constantly saying, can we just get a calendar photo? And they're like, no. And so I don't really have that many photos as much as what I did when they were younger. They love mm. to pose, whereas now that they're teenagers, they're like, no, unless I use the calendar. I'm like, please, we need some for the calendar. We need 10 at least or 12, one for each page. <laughs> so, yeah. That's right. Well, that's good. Yeah, you know what? That's true to have that for the to have it for the calendar because they don't. I, I, my kids are 14 nearly 14, nearly 17 and 18 now. And it is a bit tough to get them in, um, in, in the pictures. So actually, should we go to your next question? Yeah, sure. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Because I have, a, I have a tip for people on that. If they don't, if they don't want to do uh, besides the calendar, because I yeah. didn't even think about one, but that's a fabulous idea. Yeah. Yeah. So what other, what other ways can people organize it? If they didn't want to keep, you know, as a calendar, they don't like the photo books, what else would you have? Or is it the photo book? Well, okay. So this is something I've done. Um, and it was a bunch of photographers in 2009 in Australia started um, a photo a day project. Oh, yes. And I I highly recommend this. So if you're out there like, oh, my God, I have no pictures of my kids or I, I don't have any printed or, you know, this is something anybody can do. And you don't have to have kids to do this, to be honest. You could just do it with what your gratitude and stuff like that. Mm. So we started because here in, in Australia, it summer is January. We, we would do, um, a photo a day in January. 
And most of us had young kids at that time. So it was around the kids. But basically what we had to do is we had to photo one photo a day. Now, that was in 2009. Now, I know it's crazy to think wow. we take multiple, multiple. But you just process one photo for that day. Okay. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it could be, I do them now on my iPhone because I still do this project. It was 2009. I still do this project. <laughs> and, and, and what I say now to my kids is we're going to do a photo a day this January. You can help me decide what we want to have in it because, you know, I know because it's hard. It is really hard. So, and actually, yeah, this, we were in Japan. So I, my photo a day in January was a lot about our Japan trip. And yes, I did take some pictures of my food because the kids didn't always <laughs> want to be in it. But, but what I did is I had one photo a day and I, t I do actually post it on a social media. I do it on my Facebook page. Sometimes I do it on my business account. Sometimes I don't, depends. Um, and I will just put a little phrase, like a little something, like what that photo meant. And then at the end of the time, I will create a book with it. Now, I'm not perfect either. I'm a bit behind on my books, but here, here's from 2010. And and now I just use blur, but I back, but like 2010. And my kids still like, they love, they love looking going at through it. these. Yes. So that's what, and, and like, so oh, like, oh, my gorgeous. son's going to hate me, but anyway. <laughs> but look, like that was like, he's now 17. Yeah, yeah. That's... Brushing his teeth. Like it was as simple as him brushing his teeth. Yeah. Like, you know, um, and I just wrote, I love watching Sean brush his teeth. Yeah. You know, like just as simple as, oh, right, here's one, like the kids weren't around. So I love some flowers, you know, yeah. it could be what you're grateful for. It can be, you know, anything. Of, oh my gosh, my daughter, you know, like that now she's nearly 14 yeah. and there she, you know, oh, wow. a bump. <laughs> and I do, I have like, you know, here's the next year, you know, and it's just a photo, one photo a day for, um, there, you know, there, there's that bump you know, uh, crawling up the stairs, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's a way that you could just, and it could even, it doesn't have to be a month. It could be like a week mm. in time, but, or two weeks or something like that. Um, but actually when we moved to New York, because J January is not that interesting in New York because there's a lot of snow. Um, I did it actually in summer and I actually, did, this was book is like a photo a day for our first American summer. Yeah. That's what I just wrote our first American summer. And, um, like, look, I am a photographer, so I do get a bit creative. They are very creative. But, you know, I did get great. But there was my daughter's fourth birthday. There's that bump yeah. on a fourth birthday. So if I hadn't done this photo a day project, I probably would still not have these pictures printed as a photographer myself. Mm. Because like a doctor, we are like, you know, that smokes. Us photographers are like, you know, we don't. We tend to not do our own family things, what we say. But this photo a day project um, really, yeah. It motivates you, just, you, doesn't it? You pick your time well. and go for yeah, it. Yeah, like it's really motivating to to have that final result with it because it's, you know, yeah, to have, And then to have all these years mm. oh, of just, a, it's a snapshot. It's not the whole year, but your calendar is just like that. So it's a very similar kind of. Yeah, I love that. Um and my other suggestion is to people is get your family's take, get your, I have to say this, right? As a professional photographer, <laughs> but yeah, go to a photographer and, and it's never, your kids are like, you don't just have to do it when they're babies. Right. And there's all different. You, you don't have to do it when there's a milestone, but there is all different. Like when it maybe a kid graduates high school, yeah. like that's huge change for a family or something like that, but go to a photographer to capture that. And my highly, my recommendation is go to a photographer that does it not just digitally, that doesn't just give you, well, we don't even use USB. So it doesn't just Dropbox you the photos. I yeah. mean, go to one that will actually give you something that's a legacy. So I'm going to prove I actually do this. Okay. So um, I had a, a photographer when, when the kids were like little, um, we had a big family session and I have this beautiful keepsake album. Yeah. Beautiful. And then I also ordered like a box of prints. Yeah. And then she gave me the digitals too. Oh, that's right? great. And then when I lived in New York, um, I had a, phot a photographer come twice 
and photograph. And then I have this. So these are like the prints from both of my family sessions yeah. in New York. Oh, they're amazing. And now it's, it's actually time for us to do it again. I know, I'm the I same. I say every three years, but yes, I know it is time. Actually, it's time for, um, and yeah, I do photograph my kids for their birthday every year. That's yeah. another thing that, that's another thing you can do yes. is just take a, a portrait of your kid on your iPhone for their birthday every year. Yeah. And then you have that. Um, but I yeah, highly recommend that you go to, a, um, go to a photographer to help you create your legacy. Yeah, definitely. Because we're time poor. And like I said, I'm, I think I'm about four years behind in creating these books, you know? (laughs) Anyway, so that really is, um, keeping it real. (laughs) Yeah. Get some, that's why you pay them. Yeah. You know, you pay them to help you keep those legacies for you. Yeah. Yeah. So how come, and they don't have to be anything super big. No, no. And I like that. They could be on a table. It could even be on your kitchen bench and you change it around. I like to get ours out and put it on the bench. My kids like, like, like looking through them. Um, so what about if people want to connect with you, they want to check out the book, but they also may even want to be interested in photography as well. How can people connect with you? Okay, so my place? website is simplygray.com.au and gray is spelled with an A. And uh, it, is my, it is my name. So, um, but simplygray.com.au, the book is on there in my store. Um, you can learn about my sessions. Um, I have my Wise Women um, project is on there. Um, also, the um, I also have, there's like these women also have all of, Every woman in this book has a video, oh, they, wow. like a okay. two-minute video. So they're all on the page too. So there's lots of things. So if you need some inspiration just to hear from other women, you could do that. Or, um, yeah, you can look on there. But you can see what I do for people, for business, for family, and for themselves. Beautiful. A lot of people come in for all three. Like they'll just come to be photographed themselves. We'll do some headshots. And then the family comes at the end. Yeah, nice. That's great. That's a great way of doing it too. Thank you so much, yeah. Gray, for your time, but also sharing your own story, but sharing a few tips around backing up our photos and also how to store our photos on our iPhones in particular, or our phones in particular. So thank you so much, Gray, for joining me today. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you for having me, Norelle. And you reminded me to, yes, of some very important tips too. So <laughs> it's great. Good. Thank you so much.